day everybody this is Joe welcome back to the channel well today was kind of a cloudy day it actually rained later on but mid-morning I decided I wanted to take the camera dactyl OG camera out and just do a little bit of a photo stroll I load up four sheet film holders with grade 2 paper negatives and just see what I could do. I needed some practice with this camera. This is kind of a modern remake of a press camera is a good way to think about it. This is in fact using a Kodak Ektar 127 f 4.7 lens off of a Graflex camera and it has a ground glass or ground plastic view screen. It has a peep sight viewfinder similar to what the uh, Speed Graphics had and it's robust and lightweight and a pretty nice little camera to shoot. I have a shutter release cable here and I just needed practice going out and having fun with this thing. Well I'm down here at Old Town Albuquerque with the Camera Dactyl OG and a few film holders loaded with some grade 2 RC paper negatives. I'm going to rate this uh, paper at about ISO 12, I think, which is how I usually do so when they're being processed as negatives. I've also pre-flashed the paper negatives, which helps to control contrast, gives me a little bit more shadow detail, etc. So I'm just going to look for some opportunities to do some, some handheld shooting. I'm using the uh, Graflex Kodak Ektar 127 lens on this camera. I'm not so certain about the accuracy of the shutter. It is a little wonky occasionally when you're trying to do like a bulb exposure. It doesn't always stay open. So I'm hoping the uh, intermittent shutter speeds are going to be a little bit more reliable for me, but we shall see. Well, I've always enjoyed this artistic looking, what is this, copper? Maybe copper coated uh, artistic gate behind the Albuquerque Museum. Well, okay, so I used a 50th of a second, about f5.6. The sun was coming in and out to the clouds a little bit, so hopefully that'll be a good exposure. I did struggle, however, with this one film holder, which has the little locking buttons that has to press down against the uh, film gate hard enough to release the dark slide. So the other challenge is focusing. Now, the focusing right here is set to just slightly back from infinity focus. And I had to compose it on the ground glass view screen, but of course it's rather washed out. Uh, in the, the Even the high clouds we have here, cloudy day, it's still not easily seen. So I'm going to have to, in the future, think about maybe a little collapsible type of a hood that I can put up behind here to tape on there and make it a little bit more easy to view. Well, so I've shot a few shots here in Old Town and uh, hopefully I got the focus set. I think I did. It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to doing uh, the whole regimen of setting the shutter, opening it up, focusing, resetting the shutter, putting it in the film holder, and then you have to compose pretty much by guesswork since you have just a little viewfinder like this. I try to kind of get an idea what the framing will be when I'm doing the focusing step. I'll, I try to focus it, of course, obviously right where, where I'm going to be doing the composition from. So it kind of gives me an idea of the composition, but still you have the possibility of aiming the camera at the wrong direction. Just a little peep sight viewfinder. So we shall see how our results are, but the, you know, hopefully they're promising. And uh, hopefully the exposures at ISO 12 will be good also. So I'm going to wander around here. I have two more shots. I think I want a cup of coffee, so I'm going to wander over to the south part of Old Town and get a cup of coffee. My second to the last shot here. I'm going to go over and get some coffee now. And uh, this last one was actually at uh, hundred and hundredth of a second at f5.6. We actually had a little bit of bright sunlight here along this portal here, so that's kind of cool. All right. 
right, well, I finally got my latte here. Let's take a sip of this. Mm. Okay, that's pretty good. Blackbird Coffee House. Well, that was rather clever, but I realized I don't have anything to wipe the camera off with, so now it's covered with algae water. Maybe the coffee shop has a paper napkin or something. Well, so I have eight exposures made. Hopefully, the exposures were close enough to being normal. Hopefully the focus was good. Hopefully my composition was good and hopefully I didn't have too much motion blur hand holding the camera. All of those things could conspire singly or in multiple ways to sabotage the quality of the final images. But hey, it's all experimental in my view. It's all kind of interesting. And so now it's a cloudy day uh, I guess it's time to go home and process some of these paper negatives and see what we get. I will typically tray process these paper negatives just because if I slightly underexposed a negative, I could leave it in the tray, the developer, longer and hopefully rescue some kind of detail out of it. Or on the other hand, if I overexposed it, I can pull it early. So that's a flexibility that you don't really have when you're processing in a developing tank. So we should talk about exposures here. So in uh, summer months, the brighter part of the year, when there's plenty of UV and blue daylight in the sky, uh, I like to rate the uh, grade two Arista RC paper at about ISO of 12. Um, but I knew that maybe in the depths of the winter here, you wouldn't quite have as much blue and UV light. So it proved out to be true that I didn't quite get the exposures I wanted. And then the other complication to it is the fact that I'm using a, a different paper developer that I haven't really experimented with much for paper negatives. And so um, some of my negatives ended up not being quite as uh, dense as I would have liked. I also had two negatives in this outing that I totally blew and I think uh, I totally overexposed. They developed out pure black. And I think what it was was in order to get into the uh, viewing mode on this lens, you have to cock the shutter, then flip this lever down, and then the shutter stays open and you can look through it on the ground glass and compose your image. And I think what I did is uh, either I forgot to recock it or the, the lever stuck. In any event, when I pulled the dark slide, it, you know, it dramatically overexposed it instead of making a timed exposure. So two of the negatives were wasted, two of the six. The other four pretty much came out okay. I do have some scratches, however, some really bizarre scratches on the emulsion near the center, mostly in the center third of the, uh, of the negatives. And I don't really know where that's coming from. I looked at my rotary paper trimmer that I use when I trim these down from eight by tens. I didn't feel anything there. And also the eight by 10 sheet is face up when I'm cutting. And so if there was gonna be any scratches from that, it would be right along the edge where the cutting happens. Uh, I looked at my dark slides and I don't see any scratching going on uh, along where I pull the, the negative out. I just don't see it happening. And I looked at my little developing trays and and they look nice and smooth. So I'm starting to believe that maybe this batch of paper that I've had for a while is in fact has some manufacturing defects, some flaws. This is uh, the semi-matte finish paper and I've up to now, up to recently, I was using just the glossy. So maybe there's, maybe it's a bad batch. So the next time I do this, I am going to use the glossy paper instead just as a control. That being said, I did uh, photograph these with my digital camera. I, I inverted the negatives to positives and I made an attempt to do some clone stamping and sp spot out some of those scratches. I noticed like in this uh, shot of the 
wooden beams in the portico at Old Town, there was definitely some fogging on the left side and along the right edge. And so perhaps uh, I was a little sloppy in operating the spring back here for the uh, film holders and maybe the the dark slide slipped a little bit or whatever. That was really about the only complication I had. Oh yeah, the other complication I did make note of in the video, and I need to explain this. This particular uh, right-way film holder is a more modern kind, and it has a little locking button right next to the raised ridge, the light trap ridge, and you can't pull the dark slide out unless the locking button is pushed down to release it. And that locking button is supposed to be pushed by the film gate. When the spring-loaded back pushes the film holder up against the film gate, uh, it should push that button sufficiently to open the dark slide and it didn't probably because the tension on this elastic band wasn't what it should have been just like that it won't pull so what I had to do is squeeze it up here and now it will so I just needed a little bit more spring tension I just need to tense up this elastic band that was my fault my bad uh, nothing to do with the design or anything of the camera dactyl ca OG camera itself and that's the only film holder I have that's modern enough to have that locking button. All the others that I have are older type film holders, so that's not an issue. But it was a fun experience shooting this camera. I definitely was challenged, though, at several occasions with focusing. I would pull the film holder out. I would set the lens to the uh, through viewing mode, uh, locking the shutter open, and try to set focus. The only focusing marks that I've actually made on the helical, I have an infinity mark, and then I have three marks that are close in that are used with this uh, yellow string for portrait shooting, where someone can hold the knot up, one of the knots up to their eye, and I can set that knot, the, the mark for that. But the intermediate distances, uh, between infinity and three or four feet, those intermediate distances, I don't have any markings for, so I really have to kind of focus on the ground glass. It was kind of hard to see, so I think I'm going to be just making a makeshift hood, a light shade, so I can kind of see it a little bit better. Well, this first picture here is in Old Town. It has a, an adobe building and wall in the background. There is a tree that's kind of curving in the midground, and then you can see the shadow of the tree cast upon on the building and they have these decorative little flags flying overhead and you can see the shadow of one of those on the, the wall some trees in the background and uh, it's a nice little setting uh, indicative of Old Town and I was kind of pleased with this shot there is a little bit of um, processing artifacts along the edge, like unevenness or whatever. I normally squeegee these and, and blow dry these uh, very quickly, but I was uh, in a hurry to get to the negatives uh, hanging up to, to dry, and I had to go out to a movie a film at the Guild Cinema, and so I hung them in I, uh, my film drying cabinet on some clips, and I, what happened is, is they kind of slid together and touched. So I had some negatives touching, and that, I think, made some of this unevenness here. But anyway, it's a kind of an interesting shot. Okay, this next shot is the skeleton bride lady at the Day of the Dead shop, and I missed the focus on this. Uh, I had focused it through the ground glass, and then uh, closed the shutter, inserted the film holder, pulled the dark slide, cocked the shutter, but I must have moved a little bit. It looks like I moved because her bouquet she's holding in her hands is a little bit sharper than her face. The background is nice and dark. It has some out of focus uh, shadows, but it's an interesting shot even though it is a little bit uh, out of focus. Just the granularity of the image kind of adds to it. I kind of like it, but it's certainly a subject matter that I'm going to go back and shoot again. That's for sure. And then this other shot of these architectural beams, as I alluded to earlier, there is some light along the left side of the image. It looks like it could be fogging. I don't think it is light coming in from something because that wasn't the direction of the sunlight. And I think it's some kind of fogging. And then along the right edge is a little bit more fogging. And of course, I didn't get the horizontals exactly uh, even either. But hey, I like the little details of that uh, overhead beams there, and that was what led me to that. So those were really the three of the best shots. I have a few more here, uh, one or two, that didn't come out quite as good. A lot of muddy shadows, not as much exposure as they needed to be, and it's not really worth wasting your time looking at them. But this is a great camera, rugged, lightweight, and 
actually, I did get a few people asking me about this camera. Is that a camera? And they would say, I say, yeah, it's a camera. And one guy, I said, I sort of explained it and said, you know what a press camera is? Like a speed graph? He goes, oh, yeah. And so I, you know, I explained what it was and yeah, he understood it. So very cool. In any event, I do plan on going out more with this camera, getting used to shooting a press camera handheld with a peep sight viewfinder. And uh, the next time I'm going to be certain to use the glossy paper so I can see if those scratches are from the batch of paper or if it's something in my processing. Paper negatives. They're fun. You can shoot them in a view camera. You can shoot them in a one shot at a time in a medium format camera. You can even cut little squares down and put them in a 35 millimeter camera. But they're awful lot of fun in a bigger camera like a 4x5, this kind of a camera here. Well, you guys stay creative. Any questions, drop them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.